please come and sit towards the front edge of your chair and when you come to sit on the fr uh, front edge of the chair just check your the shape of your spine so if you tend to round back off the back of your sit bones one way of helping with that is as you know to push out the lower tummy to help you roll towards the middle part of the sit bones but another thing that will also help you is um, with your feet so you keep the feet where they are but you just think of dragging the floor back to back to you so I'm pulling pulling with my feet tractioning my feet backwards backwards and and that too creates a rolling forward of the pelvis it's almost as if you're pulling the legs in into you good and then with your hands just resting on your thighs bring your attention to your right knee um, so I'm mirroring begin to move the knee a little bit to the outside and a little bit to the inside so just um, finding some movement in the hip joint and then once you've done about five or six with the right knee then do the same with the left knee so just tilting it from side to side and even though the movement is in the hip joint uh, as you know one of the consequences is the pressure changing to the outside and to the inside edge of the foot good and then pause bring your attention back to your right leg and then this time could you lift the big toe side of the foot and then the little toe side of the foot but keeping the knee fairly still in space so just lifting once the big toe side and then the little toe side good and then pause and then please do the same with the left uh, leg left foot so just lifting once the big toe side and then the little toe side but trying to keep the knee fairly still in space so it's really exploring a movement in the ankle good and then pause bring your attention back to your right foot lift the heel as high as you can so you feel the contraction in the calf muscles at the back of the leg take the heel to the outside and put it down all the way down lift it high and bring it to the inside and put it down so you're just lifting it high taking the heel to the outside and then to the inside but allowing the knee to tilt in the opposite direction to the movement of the heel so we're also getting um, internal rotation external rotation in the hip joint good now pause bring your attention to your left heel lift the heel as high as you can so you're really working those calf muscles taking the heel to the outside put it down and then lift it high and then bring it to the inside and put it down so to the outside and to the inside and this time we're letting the knee travel freely in response to the movement of the foot good and then pause come back to center and then um, bring your right foot just slightly forward of the left and then think of just lifting the toes and then putting them back down so toes and down and then toes and down and now lift the toes followed by the ball of the foot put the ball of the foot down and then the toes so toes first ball of the foot put the ball of the foot down and then the toes and then once more toes ball of the foot put the ball of the foot down and then the toes and then lift the front of the foot keeping the heel down and then begin just to make some circles with the big toe sort of tracing these circles but allowing the knee and the the leg to respond to the movement and then pause and just reverse the direction of these circles still thinking of the little toe side of the foot leading and then once again about five or six of those movements then just re reverse the direction but this time think it's the little toe side of the foot that's organizing the movement that you're making the circles with the tip of the little toe and then reverse again good and then pause bring your um, left foot slightly forward and then just lift the toes and then put them down 
they're just toes keeping the balls of the toes, balls of the feet down, putting the toes down, once more toes and then down, and then lift the toes followed by the ball of the foot, put the ball of the foot down and then the toes. So once more toes, ball of the foot, ball of the foot down and toes, and then once toes, ball of the foot, ball of the foot down and toes, and then just lift the front of the foot and begin to make some circles leading with the big toe. And then just reverse the direction of these circles. Good. And then pause and now think it's the little toe side of the foot organising the movement. And again, after five or six of those movements, then just reverse the, the direction of the circles. Good. And then pause, bring your feet and knees together, sandwich your hands between the knees. <coughs> Excuse me. And then take your toes apart, keeping the heels together, and then come back. So toes apart, together toes apart together and now the heels apart and together heels apart together and then once more heels and then alternate toes heels toes heels once more toes and heels good and then rest the hands back on the thighs and then we allow the knees to separate as you take the toes apart the heels, toes, heels, toes. When you reach your limit, comfortable limit, just pause there and press down firmly into the little toe sides of the feet. Slice them down into the earth and think of your knees pressing out to the side. And then allow the feet to travel, the heels to travel, the toes, the heels, the toes. And this time lead with the heels, the toes, the heels, the toes, the heels, maybe the toes. And when you get again to your comfortable um, place, max, kind of maximum comfortable range, again seal down the little toe sides of the feet, almost as if you're picking up the big toe sides release. So you're sealing down the little toe sides of the feet, li almost lifting the big toe sides, release, and once more you feel some powerful contractions going on in some of those hip muscles, and release. Allow the toes to come back, the heels to come back, the toes and the heels, and then we'll just do one more, toes leading, heels leading, toes, heels, toes, Press down the little toe sides of the feet. Think of the knees pressing out to the side. Good. And then allow the toes to come back, the heels to come back. Toes, heels and toes. And then just bring the feet and knees hip distance apart again. And then with your right hand, begin just to slide down the lower leg, the front of the lower leg, towards the floor. And then explore the outside of the lower leg the inside of the lower leg and then down the back of the leg too <coughs> come back to upright and now it's the left hand just caressing down the front of the left shin to the outside of the shin to the inside and then down the back of the leg too good and now bring the right hand onto the left knee Again, just begin to slide the hand down and come back up. So, just following the outside, the inside. If you can touch the floor, that's good, but not straining to do that. And then down the back of the leg. And then the last one in the sequence is the left hand on the right knee. Begin just to slide the hand down and come back up. Go down the outside of the leg, come back up. Down the inside and then down the back of the leg too, and release, good. Now pause, and then bring your left hand behind the back of the head, and um, have your right hand behind the back of the left thigh. So, do you remember the idea 
of the line connecting the outer shoulder to the outer hip. We're going to think of the elbow and the knee coming together. So you're rounding the back. And then as you release and press the foot down, think of spiralling the elbow, the shoulder up and behind you, looking towards the elbow. And then again, you think of the elbow and the knee coming together. And um, so you're rounding the back to do that. And then as you put the foot down, press it quite deliberately into the floor to feel the movement travel all the way up through the spine to help take that elbow back. And let's do one more, so the elbow towards the knee. As you release, plant the foot down and feel the movement spiralling up to help you take the elbow up and back behind you and then release. Now, um, please bring your right hand behind the right thigh, have the elbow and the left elbow and the knee go to, uh, and the right knee go towards each other. And again, as you put the right foot down, press it down, spiral the elbow up and back. So two more, elbow towards the knee, letting the back round. And again, press that right foot down into the earth to help you open the back. And then one more time, elbow towards the knee, press the foot down to spiral up and back. And you may, may feel that as you're pressing down into the right foot to help you, it's also that slight sense of pulling the floor, dragging the floor back towards you, and then release. Now, please bring the right hand behind the back of the head. Have the left hand behind the right thigh. And again, just allow your weight to roll back to help bring the elbow and the knee together. As you put the foot down, press, think of dragging it slightly, help you spiral the elbow behind you. Let's just do two more, elbow and the knee together, put the foot down, press it into the floor to set off that chain reaction that go, travels through the spine, and then one more time, elbow and the knee together, press down to open up, good. And then pause and bring the left hand behind the left knee, and again, elbow towards the knee, put the foot down, and then spiral the elbow. Look towards the elbow with the head and eyes, and then elbow towards the knee, and then push the foot down to release, good. And then one more time, elbow towards the knee, pushing the foot down to open, open up and out, good, and then release. Now, please bring your attention to your shoulders and begin to drag your shoulders up towards the ears and think of them rolling forward and together and then down and then you squeeze them together behind you. So you come up towards the ears, forward and together, down squeeze the shoulder blades together behind you and then up towards the ears and I'm just turned so you can see from the side I'm beginning to allow the pelvis and the spine to get involved in these circles so that as the shoulders roll forward and together I'm allowing my weight the back to round as the elbows go down, I'm thinking of extending the back slightly, looking up, pushing out the tummy as part of these circles. So you can again perhaps feel, just doing a few more of these circles, how you can integrate the feet into these circles. So that's a slight sense of pulling back on the feet as I squeeze the shoulder blades together and almost pushing the floor away as I round the back. And I'll just reverse the direction of these circles, but see, can you just begin to allow the spine to be part of them?
Now pause, bring your fingertips onto your shoulders. Same thing really, it's elbows coming together, letting the back round, so your shoulder blades spread on the spine, and then you think of the taking the elbows wide, drawing those shoulder blades together, pulling on the feet, and then as the elbows come together again, you're letting the back round, round as part of this movement. Good. Just do a couple more, and then reverse the direction of the circles. So again, those are getting taller as you take the elbows wide, and those are getting shorter in the spine as the elbows come together. Good. And then um, release. Now, um, please um, bring your right arm forward. So it's just in line with the shoulder. And um, just having a soft hand, can you begin to reach the arm forward, but turn it around itself, so the thumb goes down. And then you bring the arm back towards you, keeping it long, but soft. So you're reaching, giving the thumbs down, and then um, bringing the arm back towards you as the, as the palm turns up. So again, you can let your back move as part of this movement. But see if you can really begin to think of the shoulder blade. So it's the shoulder blade that's moving to move the arm forward. And when you come back, it's drawing the shoulder back to the spine. Good. Now pause, bring your left arm forward. And then begin to reach forward, turning the arm around itself. And then thinking it's your shoulder blade drawing back that helps to bring the arm back. So reaching forward and drawing back once more forward, good. And then draw, drawing back, good. And then pause and take your right arm behind you. So um, some of you will be able to get it here comfortably, others will be able to take it much, much higher, just somewhere where you comfortably can. And think of just reaching the arm away from you, turning palm up, and then think of drawing the arm towards, towards you, keeping it long, turning it, around itself the other direction. Now all the time you're doing this, just stay looking at the arm, so you're reaching the arm away from you and towards you. And see if you can tune in, bring your attention particular, particularly to the rolling of the shoulder, rolling forward as the arm comes towards you, rolling back and down as it goes away from you. Pause. Notice how <clears throat> that shoulder feels compared to the other. Take your uh, left arm behind you. Again, you can start low, it's absolutely fine, but wherever you comfortably can, the higher possibly the better. So you're reaching it away and then you're thinking of bringing the arm towards you. Just looking at the arm all the time as you're lengthening it and shortening it. And see if you can really bring the attention to this movement of the shoulder blade, how it's rolling forward towards the chin, rolling back and down the back to take, take the arm away, away. <clears throat> now pause. <clears throat> and then, so remember the idea of the James Bond position, so you're you interlace your hands with your thumb, index fingers pointing forward and you, you're reaching the hands of your imaginary pistol far away from you but rounding the back, rounding the back, pulling in the ribs, pulling in the tummy. And then as you release from the position, begin to take the arms behind you and roll your shoulder blades together. 
but you're extending the spine. So you bring that hands together, pulling in the tummy, lowering the head to shoot the water pistol. And as you release, think your shoulder blades are drawing together and as you extend the spine to take the arms wide. So again, forward, forward. And as you release, think those shoulder blades are drawing together to turn the palms upwards. Let's just do one more. Good. And then take the arms up and wide behind you. Good. And then release. Now, um, please separate the feet and knees a little bit more. And then begin to press into your right foot. Push the earth away from you to allow the weight to shift over onto the left hand side. And then come back, push the floor away from you with your left leg to transfer the weight over onto the right hand side to our side bending. So you push into the right foot so you allow the pelvis, the right side to lift, the ribs to displace, to come over onto the left, and think of pushing into the floor to initiate the coming over onto the to the right. So just from side to side, our familiar side bending. Good. And now see if we can include the, a movement of the arm. So push into the right foot, feel the movement travel through the spine, and see if you can use that movement to help you reach the arm to touch the ceiling and then bring it down. And then you press into the left foot to reach the right arm to try and touch the ceiling first and then take the arm out, out to the side again. Use the contact into the foot to create the reach. reach. So rather than me trying to reach first then press into the foot, trying to press into the foot to create the push and the reach with the arm and then let's just do a few more each side. So the, the arm reach is actually coming from the floor, we're initiating it from our feet into the floor to reach the arm up and out. Good. And then rest. Now, um, please have your right hand in front of the tummy, I mean, and then um, with the palm facing the tummy, and then just begin to slide the hand up towards the breastbone. So as it comes up, I'm turning the palm forward, so it's the back of the hand or some part of the back of the hand that's in contact with my breastbone, and then I come back down. Again, just sliding it up and then back down a few times. Good. And then the next time you find the hand on the breastbone, just pause there and begin to slide the hand over towards the left armpit and then towards the right armpit. The left armpit, right armpit. And then the next time the hand is on the breastbone, stay there and then cup the uh, right elbow with your left palm. And think of just moving the elbow forward and straight back. Just forward and straight back, forward and back. So it's really, it's your shoulder blade wrapping around the, the chest that's taking the elbow forward and back. Good. And then pause, bring the, um, keep the palm of the left hand on the right elbow and then just begin to see can you turn the elbow a little bit to the left, come back and a little bit to the right and come back. Now, if you just look at me for a moment, just rest, rest. So it would be easy to do this. 
to like, come over on to one sitting or to do to do this. But see if you can keep the weight evenly distributed on the two sit bones as you're turning the elbow left and right. So it means one knee slides back, the other forward, forward, just to take the elbow from side to side. Okay. Now pause, just rest, rest that arm. And then with your left hand on the tummy, just begin to slide the hand up towards the breastbone and then back down. Towards the breastbone and back down. Good. And then towards the breastbone. Pause there and just see if you can explore sliding the back of the hand a little bit. Right and left towards the right armpit, towards the left armpit. And then stay with the back of the hand fixed on the breastbone. Bring your right palm to cut the left elbow. And just see, can you just nudge the elbow straight forward and back? Okay. This, it's the feeling of that shoulder blade, that right shoulder blade, just moving to reach the elbow forward and back. And then pause, and then can you begin to turn the elbow a little bit right and left, but trying to keep on your two sit bones rather than shifting, shifting the weight, weight to one side and then the other to do this. Good. Now pause. Please leave that alone. And then um, please cross your right leg over the left. And bring your left arm onto the right thigh. As if we're going to saw off the, the leg with the left arm. So you begin to reach down, turning the palm in one direction. And then draw the arm up, keeping it as long as possible. So you're reaching it down, turning it in one direction, and then bringing it back up. Okay, you see, can you feel, rather than focusing on the hand, it's the shoulder blade, the shoulder and the rib softening that help you to reach and soar. Now pause, cross over the leg so it's left over right. Have your right arm ready to soar off the left knee. And then begin to reach down and come back up. Down. So just reaching down, trying to soar. Good. And one more time. Good. And release. Good. Notice how the shoulders are feeling. And then please bring your right hand back onto the tummy. Slide the hand up towards the breastbone. See if you can take it over to the right armpit. Slide it up and down the sides of the body. Good. And then bring the hand into the area of the lower back. And then just begin to make some circles circles with the back of the hand and then just reverse the direction of those circles Good. and then pause bring your left hand behind the back of the head so the right hand is in the area of the lower back the left hand is on the back of the head and then just see if you can take your right elbow back in space. So I'm not so much turning the body, just thinking of that right elbow going back in space. Right elbow back in space. But see, can you feel, as you're taking the elbow back, that movement of the shoulder blade back to the, to the spine? 
shoulder blade back to the spine. Good. And then pause, just rest the arms for a minute. And then once more, bring the right hand into the area of the lower back, left hand behind the back of the head. And now think of turning everything to the right and then come back to centre. So everything turning to the right, coming back to centre. So uh, right knee would go back, left knee forward to turn everything to the right and back to center and then the next time you are turned to the right stay there and just see can you move your right elbow back a little bit further good pause leave that alone And then um, bring your left hand onto the tummy, again slide it up um, to the breastbone. Take the hand underneath the armpit if possible, and then just slide up and down a few times. You can come forward and back. And then find the area of the lower back, and just see if you can make some circles, circles in the area of the lower back, just reverse them. And then fix the, fix the hand in place, bring your right hand behind the back of the head. And just think, can you keep initially your torso facing forward? Can you think of the left elbow just taking it back in space? So the back of the hand is fixed on the lower back, just taking the elbow back. And see again, can you feel that movement of the shoulder blade to, that helps to take the elbow back. And then pause, and then could you turn everything to the left, and then come back. Everything to the left, and come back. So left knee would go back, right knee forward. And then stay wherever you are turned. And then can you again just move the left elbow a little bit further back in space. So it's that shoulder blade we're trying to activate, draw back towards the spine. Good. And then release. And this is how the, again the shoulders are feeling. And then um, please, once more, bring your right hand into the area of the, of the lower back. The okay. area of the lower back. And um, could you begin to think of sliding the hand up the back? So the fingertips will point towards the head. And then you slide it down, fingers will point towards the floor. So you're keeping the back of that hand in contact with yourself as you're sliding the fingers, the hand up the back and then down. Just sliding up and down. Good. Good. Just notice how far up the back can you comfortably slide the hand? Good. And then pause. Bring your left hand behind the back of the head. And once more, could you slide your right hand up the, up the back and think of tilting the head back gently, arching the back, and think you're pulling the floor towards you, dragging the feet back. So it's, as you're sliding the fingers up the back, you're lifting and taking the head back slightly as you're thinking of pulling, pulling the floor towards you, and then you release. So we're back to our rounding and arching, 
and you can feel that when you allow the back to arch, arch, can you feel that you can slide your hand further up the spine? Good. Pause. Just rest for a moment. And then can you bring your left hand into the area of the lower back? And then just begin, just slide it up and down a few times. Um, so you're pivoting the fingertips to point towards the head as the hand slides up the back and the fingers down, pointing down as you slide down the back. And once you kind of feel where can you go comfortably, then bring the right hand behind the back of the head. And as you slide the hand up the back, think of arching, taking the head back, and pull the floor towards you to see how far can you comfortably take the hands up the back. Good. And once more. Good. And then, and then release. Just notice how the shoulders are feeling. And then um, please bring your hands together in the front of the body. So the, my, the backs of my hands are together. Backs of my hands together. And then just begin to slide your hands up towards the chin, chin, and then you keep the backs of the hands together as you're reaching the hands down and away from you. So you're sliding the hands up the front, up the front, good, and then sliding the hands down and away from you. You can, again, if you can see me on the screen, I'm allowing, as part of this, the back to extend as the hands come up and the back to round as the hands reach down. Just coming up and, and down. Good. Pause. So again, it's one, uh, uh, an interesting lesson. So, uh, as I mentioned earlier, I'm teaching this workshop for people neck and shoulder pain, and um, often one of the you know they're so focused on the issue of the shoulder or the or the neck um, that often um, not perhaps appreciating that um, the the way that they're holding their, their neck or holding the middle is actually their spine is actually something that might be contributing to this kind of um, pattern. And this lesson is very much about wakening up parts of the spine as part of our neck and shoulder movements. And um, please bring your hands together behind you. And it's the same position. I've got the backs of the hands, as much of the backs of the hands together, together behind me. And don't force anything here. Just think you're sliding the backs of the hands up the back and then down the back. Up the back and down the back. Good. Up the back and down the back. There's tremendous movement that has to take place in the shoulders to, to uh, enable this movement to happen. Good. And then pause and take, take a, a rest. Now please um, uh, bring your right, sorry, your left hand behind the back of the head, and have your right hand palm on your on your neck, on your neck. 
so and the, so, uh, right palms on the neck. So I'm lifting, scooping up my head, head to create length in the in the spine. And then staying as tall as you can. Can you turn to look to the right and come back to the right and then come back to the right and then come back Good. and then just rest the arms and then bring the le uh, right hand behind the back of the head the left hand is wrapped around the kind of the scruff of the neck and I'm thinking of lengthening, lengthening up. And then could you turn to look to your left and come back to centre. To the left, good. And come back to centre, good. And then once more to the left, good. And then come back to the centre, good. And then release. Now, please... Take hold if you have your board, your board or book. So I've got a light yoga block. The idea is it shouldn't matter if it falls, if it falls. Um, so uh, I always have to tell people like this, if it falls, let it fall. Don't suddenly try and grab it because that just, uh, just let it fall and we can always um, pick it up. Have the, have the board resting in your right hand. So I've just got my fingertips just supporting, supporting the board. And then could you, could you um, reach the board up and behind you as if we're um, offering a cup of tea to the person in the met mezzanine. So you're reaching it up and up and away from you. And then bring the board back in front of you. So we, we, um, once you imagine you've got a cup of tea balanced on your board and you're just reaching it up and away from you. Good. And then can you keep the cup of tea balanced on the board as you take it and offer it to the person behind you. So you then try and bring it forward, forward, and then you think of reaching it up and behind you. Good. So, and then you think of circling it forward and taking it behind you to offer the person. So can you see on the screen all that we've been doing? Can you see what my back, in order to create the space and the reach, the reach, it's the shoulder, the shoulder has to roll forward, the back rounds to offer it to the person behind you and then you reach it up and away. Just do a few more in your own time. Good. And then up and away. Good. And then rest. Hopefully you didn't spill a drop of the imaginary um, cuppa. cuppa. And um, the all that we've been exploring today, today, it's can we organise, organise our shoulders and chest, chest to do to do the movement. Can we think of the board actually being moved from our middle? Please bring the um, board into your left. And first of all, can you reach it up, reach it up to the people on the, on the mezzanine. They were trying not to spill a drop and then we'll bring it, bring it back. So again to reach. So can you 
um, press into the right foot, so it's our side bending, is creating the reach. So the hand is still soft, still soft, and then bring the board back in front of you, and then see can you offer it without spilling a drop to the person behind you. So you see how my back's rounded. And then can you begin to spiral the board up and out to the person up there, good. And again think of bringing the board again to offer to the person behind you. Just do a few more, a few more going up and then down. Good. Good. Pause, just rest for a moment, rest for a moment. And then um, just put the board to one side and then bring your right hand back in front as if the board is still there. You still have your imaginary drink or whatever perched there. Could you begin to spiral, to take your drink, offer it up, and then try not to spill a drop, drop as you offer it to the person behind you. Again, can you organise the movement? Movement careful not to spill a drop, so that's it, so the shoulder has to move to facilitate the position. Now pause, try it in the left hand, so imagine the drink is there, and again we're going to spiral it up to the mezzanine, and then again, can you offer it to the person behind you? So when yeah, to the person behind, we're rounded, rounded in the back, the shoulder is rounded forward, and then to begin to offer it to the person up and behind you, the spine goes into extension. Good. Good. So now pause for a moment, pause for a moment, and then uh, think you have got two cups of tea, two cups of tea in the, in the palms of their hands and we're going to offer circle round and bring their hands uh, over overhead and then we're going to come back without spilling a drop to take the cups of tea behind us. So you're trying not to spill a drop as you circle the arms up and then trying not to spill a drop as they go behind. Good. Just do a few more. So again, can you I'm rounding the back and extending the back. Good. Now, um, I don't know whether you can notice, but here we're leading with the little toe side, um, sorry, the little finger side of the, of the hands. So now, reverse. I think it's the thumb side that's leading these circles. Thumb side that's leading these circles. Good. And then just pause and have a have a rest. So um, absolutely fabulous movement that because can you see if you just have a look at me on the screen See, a lot of people keep this area stiff and try and then they'll spill the cup of tea. But it's actually, it's getting the, these very important movements in the shoulders, but connect, connecting them into the, into the spine.
Now, pause, and could you just reach one arm forward, and then come back. One arm forward, and come back. Okay. And then the other arm forward, <laughs> and come back. So can you see, to reach one arm forward, See, one way of reaching arm forward is to forget about the back and try and lift the arm. Whereas actually, actually the reaching of the one arm forward involves the other shoulder going, going back. So that we're moving the arms from our middle ra rather than that kind, kind of thing. So, um, I'd encourage you, if you want this homework, just to kind of, in your reaching today, desk, computers, washing out, whatever, just to know, are you reaching with your middle? Are you moving the arms from your centre? Or are you choosing to lift, lift your arms? Thank you very much everyone. Um, last class for uh, a while of the Fitzit class. Um, the Thursday morning Feldenkrais will continue when I get back from Belgium. And um, thank you very much everyone. If I don't see or speak to you, have a lovely, lovely summer.